Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I want to take a look at TinWeb. TinWeb is a WordPress platform that has several features and services, and they're currently running a deal on AppSumo. Let's start by taking a look at what the platform is. It has a managed hosting component that's hosted on Google Cloud and it's containerized, which means that it's not like shared hosting on an inexpensive hosting site like SiteGround. It has a website builder built on top of Elementor. There are templates, premium plugins, a backup service, which is what I'm mostly interested in, some security options, speed optimization options, SEO service, analytics and reports, and technical support. So. I've purchased already a code from AppSumo and tried it out and I want to show you what some of these things are and my take on them. But before we look at AppSumo pricing, let's take a look at the standard pricing. $20 a month for one site, $60 for three, and $170 for ten. We'll look at these things when we go to AppSumo. Let's take a look at the plans here. So one very interesting thing about this, which has gotten a lot of attention, is that even if you don't renew the hosting, you get lifetime access to the web management platform. So let's talk about the hosting for a second. For $69, you get one site hosted for one year. That site can have up to 25,000 monthly visitors, and you get five gigabytes of storage for themes, plugins, WordPress, the media library, and so on. But this is something that renews at $69 a year. So you're bought, you get the first year with the code, and then if you don't cancel it, you'd have to pay $69 next year. However, the rest of the deal is lifetime. So you get the 30 connected sites. You can use their dashboard to manage their sites. You get 20 gigabytes of backup storage which isn't enough probably for 30 sites, but would be enough for a few sites. You get 100,000 images optimized a month, which is a huge number. There's a built-in site builder. You get widgets, templates, and plugins. I've purchased and I've set up a remote site using TinWeb. Let's go take a look. So once you log in, this is the dashboard you come to. If you don't have a site, there's a big button here to add one. Just to look at the dashboard here really quickly, this is your account information, notifications, an activity log, a summary of your account and your usage. This is a quick getting started video, live chat, feature requests. This is goes into their help desk ticketed system, add a website, a folder of your websites, and this dashboard. So I have a website, davidmccann.com which I haven't really used in a long time. I've just had like a placeholder there. So I thought I would install the TinWeb dashboard onto it and look at the features there. So we see that there are a couple of options. This is to go to the home page, to go to the admin. This is to go into the management console. And this will t give you the option to delete. So let's try going first into the management console. So when you add a remote site, you have this menu here. You can migrate it to TinWeb. You can install the theme and the starter templates. There's a list of plugins, themes. This just shows you what themes you have installed. The option to look at the backups, the image optimizer, SEO, security, and performance, okay? So you basically go down the list or pick the items that you want to install. I've already installed one, which was the personal one. Let's see where that was, this one here. Okay, and they said on the sales page that there were dozens or 20. These are the ones that I see here. I don't see any navigation at the bottom to see more. So uh, there are some kind of common things missing, most notably e-commerce for WooCommerce, 
or a membership type of template. I think I saw that they're going to be adding some e-commerce templates in the near future. Plugins, I've already added a few. These are the ones that I have installed and that are active. The list of all plugins, let's see, we go over here to add plugins. These are the plugins that they offer you with the plan. You know, it comes as part of your 10 web plan. There's a form maker that has a lot of extensions. It looks like a pretty full featured form maker. And there's a photo gallery and there's an event calendar that also has a large number of extensions. You know, honestly, I haven't dug into those and actually created forms or calendars. But if they work well, that's that's a nice value because a good form maker and a good event calendar are things that are sometimes a little bit pricey. Some of the other things here are, you know, I guess if you needed them, you would you would try them out. You know, slider, Instagram feed, Google Maps, Facebook feed, Google Analytics. So that one might be interesting if you're not using something else. You know, I'm not going to really go into these in any detail. I did try, I did install this one because it comes with a lot of widgets for Facebook for different types of integration or interactivity with Facebook. These are the premium plugins that you can install if you want. And let's go back. When you go to the overview, the SEO is a plugin also. And we're going to look at that in just a minute. This is telling us what things are up to date or not. This performance, this is just testing your kind of like a speed test. This is an image optimization service, kind of like short pixel. Might be similar, might not be quite as good, but if you don't have short pixel, it, you know, it's great to use it. Now, the security service I was a little disappointed in because what it does is it you have the options to check for vulnerabilities for plugins and themes. And I think that's good. So basically, they keep up to date with the vulnerability reports and notify you if something you're using has a known vulnerability. And you have the option, if it's known vulnerable, to automatically update it, which I chose. It also does some file comparison with core and the themes and plugins on WordPress directory. And that has given me a number of false positives, which I ignored here. Things like I don't have 2017 installed, so it's saying that, you know, there's a warning there or a potential issue. To be fair, iTheme Security, the file compare, I also got some false positives from that. But false positives, if you get a lot of false positives and you tend to not pay attention, and then when something is really serious, you've missed it. But that's a security, and it's all kind of after the fact. It has a scheduling where you can schedule for scanning for malware. And I, th I think it's set by default to weekly, and I, I changed it to daily. So you've got the file comparison, you've got a malware scan, but there's no protection of your login form, you know, no brute force protection. And so I was a little disappointed. I thought, you know, since they say security, it would be good to include some plugin for that or to let people know that they need that because some new and experienced WordPress user might think that security is all taken care of. The backups were also something that I was very interested in. You can do an on-demand backup. You can download the backups that are made and they are zip files, so that's good. You can restore, of course. You can schedule. By default, it's weekly, so I change it to daily. It's interesting to see that can back up every 12, 6 hours or real time. And something more aggressive might be good if you had an online store, for instance. You might want to make sure you're backing up those orders and setting for whether you want files and databases. So let's go take a look at the WordPress admin and see what the install looks like from that side. I mentioned security. I installed the WebArcs plugin myself because I didn't want the site to be hacked while making the video. But it, it's, it starts out, it installs this web manager, and this is the connection between your remote site and the dashboard. 
And so that was easy to establish. I was already logged in to the TinWeb dashboard. I went and installed the plugin TinWeb Manager, which is a free plugin in the WordPress directory. <clears throat> and it did the sync without any problems. I installed the web builder so I could try that out. I installed the security, the backup. Elementor is installed with the web builder. I saw the form maker and the pro version, the image optimization, the photo gallery, the SEO, the social widgets, to see kind of real quickly what those things look like. I'm going to start with the backup because the backup is the thing that's kind of most interesting to me because this is a value to me to be able to back up remote sites and use the dashboard and the storage there. When you create a job, you can back up the database or just files or both. Now, archive is when it creates a zip file, but when you do automatic backups, you have the option for a sync and that's then incremental. And so that's nice because that will save you some space in your allocation. Then these are the locations that it comes to. So you can back up to TinWeb but you can also back up to Amazon S3, MS Azure, or Dropbox. Might be nice if they had a few more locations, but it's nice that there are a couple of others that you could use for some sites if you don't want to use up all of your allocation for these. So the rest of this is pretty standard here. The image optimization, you have an option of extreme, you know, really compress, balance, or conservative. Don't compress a lot, but, you know, emphasize image quality. It's saying it doesn't work on localhost, but I'm not installed on localhost, so that's an odd thing. These are the advanced options, which I think that's similar. So, you know, Short Pixel has some of these. And you have the option to have it automatically optimized when you upload the images or not. I haven't tried the Facebook widgets, but they have a large number of them. So that's kind of interesting to me. You, know, you have likes, you have Facebook comments, follow, recommendations, Facebook login button. They also have a Twitter and LinkedIn. The SAO I was a little bit disappointed in. They do synchronize with Moz. I think that allows you to get some statistics from there. I haven't set that up. You have redirects and you have some basic site-wide settings here. But if we go to a post and take a look at the meta box here for SEO, it looks kind of standard, but there's really not quite as much here that you would get with something like Yoast or Rank Math or SEO Press. So that's the SEO. There is the photo gallery. Formmaker was kind of interesting, interested in forms, and I noticed a few things that were pretty advanced. One of the things I was interested in is they have some hooks there, so you could do some synchronization with your email marketing provider, which is pretty cool. Conditional fields. It's got some payment options in there, so that seems like pretty robust. And then the last thing to look at here is their customized version of Elementor. Of course, this is Elementor free version, so there is no theme builder or pop-ups, for instance. It does have some templates here that are installed with theme for the header and the footer. These here, like the post single and the archive. Just so you can see what widgets and whatnot come with it. This is standard Elementor here. This is all standard Elementor. Now these are widgets that are added to Elementor that are tied to the TinWeb premium plugins. Some of these things, for example, I didn't install the events calendar, so I'm guessing that I would need to have that installed in order to actually use that. But I did install the form, so I can insert forms here. Then these are some premium widgets that come with their branded builder, pricing table, list, posts, block quote, countdown, call to action, yet another flip box, carousel, share buttons, login, nav menu, animated header, search form. So you can edit the header and footer templates. So for example, this is the header template. There's the site logo, which you set in the customizer, and here's the menu. It did install 
this theme, which is a very, very stripped down theme. There's nothing special in the customizer for it. You can use Astra or any other theme of your choice here. You're not stuck with their site-wide templates. You can, you can use the theme and use free Elementor, or you could install any other plugin like Elementor Pro if you wanted to do everything yourself from scratch. So my overall take on TinWeb is that the incremental backup for your sites is pretty good value, $69. You can get 20 gigs of space and backup up to 30 sites. Probably not enough for 30 sites, but it might be enough for five or 10 sites, depending on the size of the sites. And that's pretty cheap for a lifetime deal. So I kind of felt it's worth taking a chance on this platform just for that reason. The themed, you know, their branded version of Elementor is okay. I don't think it's super special or anything, but it has their extra widgets that they've added. So if you want to use those, that's good. You, or if you have your own widget packs, then you could use those or you can use whatever plugins and whatnot you want. The SEO I thought was a little disappointing. I think I'd want to use something else. The security I also thought was a little disappointing. You know, it's not complete. It's fine for what it does, but it leaves a big hole in your armor there that you need to fill, to plug. If you go to manage here, if there are updates needed, they would show, see it says plugin updates photo gallery. So we can update that and it should update it on the site. That's interesting. I wonder if it updated it or not. Let's try that again. There we go. One thing to keep in mind, even though this is a dashboard where you can manage multiple sites, it's not a main WP or a managed WP or an iTheme sync because you have to update each site individually. It's still easier than logging in to a lot of sites, but it's not as easy as those tools make it. My understanding is that in the next few months, they are going to add that feature. However, even beyond just being able to update multiple sites at once, those tools like MainWP have reporting so that you can generate client reports and other tools like that that are geared towards people who are working with clients. I think this is something new to TinWeb. They may add some of these features. I've seen mention of white labeling and things like that, but I don't believe there are any concrete plans yet. That's TinWeb. I hope that you found this summary useful. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.